Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for a new Databricks video. Today's video is about liquid clustering. Liquid clustering is going to replace traditional table partitioning along with Z-Order to optimize query performance. It's going to replace partitioning because using liquid clustering you can redefine the clustering keys without rewriting the data. For example, if you have an already partitioned table, how can you change the partition keys? You have to load the data, redefine the partition keys and rewrite the data. But using liquid clustering, you don't have to rewrite the data. You just redefine the clustering keys. Now, when it comes to Z-Order, which is an optimization technique that reorders the data based on certain columns, this is also going to be replaced by liquid clustering, which adjusts the data based on the cluster keys. So two for the price of one. But enough talking, let's see an example. Okay guys, here on our Databix workspace, let's see what liquid clustering is about. The goal is to replace traditional partitioning and z-ordering. It combines smaller files and divides larger files to enhance query performance. It is incremental, the data is only rewritten when necessary. It provides flexibility to change clustering keys without rewriting existing data. And it's beneficial for columns with high cardinality unlike partitioning. This is also extremely important and we are going to witness the difference between uh, columns with high cardinality and low cardinality and partitioning and clustering. Now, z-ordering in a nutshell is an optimization technique used to improve query performance by reordering data in the storage layer. When you z-order data by certain columns, you essentially instruct Databricks to store related information close together physically on the disk. This collocation significantly reduces the amount of data scanned during queries. But z-order rewrites all data, so this is the drawback here. And when it comes to partitioning, we have some requirements. First, we have to know the data distribution should be known beforehand and the partition columns have, need to have very low cardinality. So there are drawbacks here. Too many partitions will create a lot of small files. We have the small files problem. And then after defining partition columns, they cannot be changed, right? As we said, we have to uh, redefine the partition keys and then rewrite all the data, which is not very efficient. Now, liquid clustering is suitable for tables with frequent filtering, rapid growth, and where typical partition key results in too many or too few partitions. If you're going to convert existing partitioned tables, then use partition columns as clustering keys, and then choose keys based on commonly used query filters. If you're going to trigger clustering, you have to use the optimize command for the existing tables. Now, in this example, we are going to create a data frame, which uh, the first column would uh, have a list of, of countries and the second one will generate a random ID, right? So we are going to create 1000 records, the first column countries, second column random IDs. Now, as you can tell, countries usually is, is being used as a partition key, right? So here you can see the countries, you can see the random ID. Now, this column is of high cardinality. This is considered of low cardinality. And so let's, uh, let's uh, actually save this data frame. One, uh, we're going to create the first table would be the partitioned table. So we are going to partition by country, which is a very typical column to partition the data. And then we are going to use liquid clustering and the syntax here is actually to use cluster by and we are going to cluster by country and uh, store it as a table named clustered underscore table then we are going to run the optimize command for both give it a second to actually save the data okay the data has been saved let's run the optimize command for the partitioned table Come on. 
and here as you can see we have the metrics the number of files added 10 number of files removed 40 and all these kind of things and here when we optimize the clustered table loading liquid metadata right and we have number of files added zero number of files removed zero but here if you scroll down you will see the clustering metrics and all these uh, metadata here right so now let's query the partition table and filter by country where country equals USA so let's see how long that takes it will take uh, 1.57 seconds let's see if we um, if we run the same query in the cluster table 1.35 which is yeah it's it is a difference a significant difference but still we are using a column of uh, low cardinality but uh, if you're going to see you know the best uh, results when you use clustering is to uh, cluster the data based on a high cardinality column and here you would see the you know the difference between the partition table and the cluster table for example next we are going to uh, save a new table called uh, we are going to create two new tables actually the first one we are going to partition by random ID and in the second one we are going to cluster by random ID now random ID as you can tell it's a, a high cardinality column and let's see what uh, will uh, what the difference would be when we run a simple query between those two tables give it a second to load okay here we are let's run the optimize commands for both tables and now let's uh, run a simple select statement on the partitioned table and then on the clustered table let's see the difference in time let's see how many seconds we will need for the partition table with a sim simple select star query and it took 7.65 seconds now let's see on the cluster table as you can tell it's pretty simple it's 1.17 right now here you can tell the difference between uh, liquid clustering and traditional partitioning because as you can see when you use columns of uh, high cardinality then liquid clustering uh, significantly reduces the amount of time that you need to query your data now if we check the file system of the partitioned table right now we are going to have many many partitions because we partitioned the table based on a column of high cardinality so we would have look so many files right here we have lots and lots of files now if we see the files uh, the files of the cluster table as you can see it's only one right you can see the difference and uh, here you know when to use cluster by and partition by it's not always necessary to use liquid clustering but from you know Re databricks recommends from now on to use cluster by instead of partition by now if we describe extended the cluster table you will see here for example the clustering information here we have used random id as the clustering column and here you scroll to the bottom and expand the table properties you can see the clustering columns here as well random id now if you want to create a table from a partition table you want to create a cluster table the only thing you have to do is use the create table command and then cluster by the you have to provide the clustering keys of course as select from the partition table so this is how you can create a cluster table based on a partitioned table you just have to uh, use the cluster by command here now if you describe uh, this uh, clustered from partition table that we created again you will see that uh, the clustering information we are using country to cluster as a clustering key 
right so if you want to actually remove the clustering keys all you have to do is use the alter table command alter table the table name cluster by none so if you do that and then re describe the table let's see as you can see now in the clustering underneath clustering information there is no column but if you want to redefine the clustering keys the only thing you have to do is again use alter table command table name cluster by and here you provide for example two two columns as clustering keys now if we describe again we have two columns here right and this is how easy it is to redefine the clustering keys now there are some limitations of liquid clustering you can only specify columns with statistics statistics collected for clustering columns by default the first 32 columns in a delta table have statistics collected and you can specify up to four clustering columns now if we check very quickly the documentation Delta Lake liquid clustering replaces table partitioning and Z order to simplify data layouts, decisions, and optimize query performance. Liquid clustering provides flexibility to redefine clustering keys without rewriting existing data, allowing data layout to evolve alongside analytic needs over time. Databricks recommends using Databricks runtime 15.2 and above for all tables with liquid clustering enabled. What is liquid clustering used for? Databricks recommends liquid clustering for all new delta tables. The following are examples of scenarios that benefit from clustering. Tables often uh, filtered by high cardinality columns. We witnessed that already. Tables with significant skew in data distribution. Tables that grow quickly and require maintenance and tuning effort. Tables with concurrent write requirements. Tables with access patterns that change over time. Tables where a typical partition key would leave the table with too many or too few partitions. You can enable uh, liquid clustering on an existing table or during table creation. And here is the syntax when we use Python, uh, SQL, and then Python, right? So you can take a look on the documentation yourselves and see what the liquid clustering is about. This is it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something new. You can use liquid clustering from you know, this point onward, from new tables that you create, but you can experiment with liquid clustering. This is a new concept for me as well, but it seems to be very beneficial to use it, when, especially when you have high cardinality columns. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.